Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Race. As we're looking at that passage here today in the book of Acts, what we're, uh, we're seeing the church, honestly, the church at its best. <laughs> the church at its best was the church at the beginning. Uh, it was growing rapidly. Uh, people were sharing in their possessions. There was, uh, the Holy Spirit was moving at, 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 at just an incredible, uh, well, people were perceiving the movement of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's still just as active today as he was then. Uh, but uh, we just see a movement of God taking place and all these miracles taking place and people joining and being baptized and getting saved and just amazing, amazing stuff. And uh, as we look at it here, well, one of the things we do is, uh, as, as Christians here today, so, so what are things that, that are uh, prescriptive, meaning we need to do these exact things? And what are descriptive? Uh, what, are, what are principles we see them playing out that apply to us today? So uh, as we, we do that here today, what, one of the questions that, you know, we always kind of have as a church is, you know, so what should be, how should we be organized? What should we be doing? Uh, what does it mean to, um, as you grow and expand, what, what does that look like in a local church? And today's one of those passages that, that help us understand a bit about uh, God's expectations for us as we, as we meet the needs of others. So uh, let me read it here, and I think you'll see the, uh, the things that we take directly from it. Uh, the principles that dry, apply directly to us here 2,000 years later and things that, that don't necessarily, but most of it does. Anyways, uh, let me, uh, we're in Acts chapter 6, and it says this, But as the believers rapidly multiplied, they were, there were rumblings of discontent. Even in growth, growth, rapid growth, that brings problems, challenges, uh, things that you have to work through. I mean, when you don't grow or when things are shrinking, that's a problem. But when things grow rapidly, there are also problems, issues, uh, things that you have to work through to keep up with this growth. That's what we're going to see here today. It says this, The Greek-speaking believers complained about the Hebrew-speaking believers, saying that their widows were being discriminated against in the daily distribution of food. All right, so they're, once again, one of the great things they're doing. They're taking care of, of the widows and the orphans and those in need. But there's some complaining going on, some complaining going on how the food being distributed and this tension of, of uh, Jewish uh, widows versus uh, Gentile widows and not being treated the same. And this is a big deal, right? There, there's, is, there, is there some discrimination going on here? Um, is there, what, what, what's happening? So, verse number two, so the 12, 12 apostles called the meeting of all the believers. Uh, they said, we apostles should spend our time teaching the word of God, not running a food program. And so, brothers, select seven men who are well-respected and full of the spirit and wisdom, and we will give them this responsibility. Then we apostles can spend our time in prayer and teaching the word. All right, so you can look at that several different ways. Like, if you look at that from a very, very skeptical view of like, oh, these apostles think they're, they're too good to feed the, the, the widows and, and the orphans. That this is, is below them. But that's, that's not what we see in the, in the full context here. It's, it's not that they don't care about this. What we find is that everything that's taking place, literally thousands of believers have been added. These 12 apostles are not only doing the preaching and getting tossed in and out of prison and doing all that, but they're also running this food program. It's just too much. It's too much to do well. So they said, you know what? We're going to focus on the things, on the unique things that God has called us to do, to, to praying and, and teaching of the word. And we're going to select some, some men among you. We're going to select some, some people to run this program. Now, now they didn't say, we're, we're just going to, to run this task. That you guys, you know, we're still going to, going to you know, give all the directives here. We just need some people to do the, the legwork. No, they're handing over responsibility, meaningful ministry. So we're going to select some people and you guys do this work. Why? Because you can do it better than us. <laughs> you, guys are going to, you guys are going to take it. And what, the, what they're saying here is that this, this problem that was happening, that was bubbling up as, as grumblings about discrimination, was just bad administration. It was, they were trying to do too many things and they weren't doing it well. And there was this realization among the apostles, we can't do it all. And in fact, we're not supposed to do it all. That the church is full of all of these people. And we're all supposed to, we all have unique gifts and abilities and talents. And ours, what God has called us to do is, is to teach and pray. 
But there are some people among you who are great administrators, uh, who are great leaders, uh, who are great at, at, at all these different tasks. Let's start deploying the body to do what they're supposed to do. What would have happened if they didn't delegate though? But what would happen if they kept all the responsibility to themselves? The church would have probably stopped growing. It would have stopped. You could, they could only manage so much. They can only do so many things. And eventually, if, if a leader doesn't empower those around them to do the work, the growth stops. They become the, the, the lid to the growth. So as, as the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding them, hey, this is not your role. There are other people that can do this not just as good as you, but better than you. Because they weren't doing a good job. <laughs> there was grumbling. We don't hear grumbling later. These seven men that were selected did a better job at this ministry than the apostles were doing. How amazing is that, right? Okay, let's see what happens next. It says, everybody liked the idea. And they chose the following. Stephen, uh, we're going to find it out a little bit later here. Uh, a man full of faith in the Holy Spirit. Philip. Procurus, Nicanor, Timon, uh, per, uh, Perineus, and Nicholas of Antioch, an early convert to the Jewish faith. These seven were presented to the apostles who prayed for them and they laid their hands on them. Notice also how strategic they were. There are some Greek names there, there are some, some Jewish names there. So what was the issue? There was some possible discrimination or at least the appearance of it. Hey, we're going to pick some a well well-balanced group here to do this. So what was the result? What was the result after the, the, the apostles released some control, empowered some people, not just gave away tasks, gave away responsibility. It says they gave them this responsibility. It says God's message continued to spread. The number of believers greatly increased in Jerusalem and many of the Jewish priests were converted too. The religious leaders, some of them are starting to come to faith. Why? Because the apostles realized we can't do everything. Now, as we look at the church, there's obviously implications for this, right? When we talk about every member being on mission, every member of the church body has a role and responsibility, has gifts, has talents. Has, and if we, as myself, the, the pastor and, and, and other ladies of the church, if we do not uh, engage and pass off responsibilities to the member of the church, we're not going to do it as well. I, I can't do every single task in the church. That, that would be crazy, right? But by lifting up leaders, by developing others, by trusting the gifts and abilities that God has given others, we're able to continue to grow and expand and actually do a better job of the things that God has called us to do. That's true in the church. And then we can also even take this principle even further down into our daily lives. That you personally... What are the things that you need to focus on? What are the things that you need to trust others to do? If that's in your workplace, in your home, if that's in your community, we can only do so much. Uh, who do we need to trust? Who do we need to lift up? Not just with tasks, but with responsibility. And whatever that situation, whether that's in your family or in your workplace, in your community, don't be the lid to the growth. Don't be the, the cap to other people's potential. Don't hold other people down by not being willing to delegate responsibility to others. All right, well, let's go ahead and pause there for today. And then tomorrow we're gonna, we're gonna pick up the account. Uh, here at the end of chapter six, we're gonna find Stephen gets arrested. Uh, one, of those, one of those deacons, uh, and that's the name for these servants, deacons, uh, ministry leaders here in the church, the first seven that they appointed here. Um, but we're going to find out what happens to him tomorrow after his arrest. For now, let's go ahead and pause there. Let's pray and get our day started. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for today. We thank you for just this incredible lesson in leadership. And God, just this principle we see throughout Scripture, God. We see it through with Moses and Jethro and, and, and trusting the 70, God. We see it here with the apostles and, and lifting up in this one instance, you know, seven leaders to, to do this program. God, help us to... Um, First of all, just that sense of humility, God, that we don't have to do it all, that we can't do it all. Uh, you haven't called us to do it all. Um, help us to see ways to, to pass off responsibility, to trust others. And God, help us to, to look for opportunities to, to lead up as well, to, to take burdens and loads off of, of the leaders above us um, and, and help them. 
God, we just want to, to model your type of leadership. <laughs> that, that leaders serve, uh, that, that we uh, put others' needs in front of our own. God, we just want to model our lives after you. So guide us and lead us today. Uh, help us to find some, just some practical ways to, to, to live this out, uh, even, even as soon as today. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. All right, well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now, right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.